Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be forging and machining a 40 taper tool. So, why exactly am I fumbling about with forging and machining a 40 taper tool holder? Well, to be honest, it's kind of an experiment. I'm seeing how quickly I can forge and machine a part. Uh, with parts that require a lot of material removal for flanges or other features, it can often be faster to forge them, and I'm trying to experiment experiment with tool holders at the moment so that then in the future I can make different dies and different tools so I can forge out other parts. Let's... Now a 40 taper tool holder really doesn't require a massive amount of uh, material removal, certainly not enough to really warrant forging, but there is enough there that I think I can save some time. See with a 40 taper tool holder you would need two and a half inch steel, round mm. steel, uh, to machine away and create this taper and also for whatever feature you want on the end. If I can save a few hours of work on the Chinese lathe then why not? My first operation is going to be machining down one end of the bar to one inch and machining a small taper onto it so it fits all the way down into my So dot. with that being said, off to the lathe so that I can machine down my steel. So now that my blank is machined, I did have to go back and make the taper much longer. I can go throw it in the forge and get the forge. Out. front of the shop to the back of my 64F100. This here is the forging. I let it cool down. It is a little bit lopsided. Not perfect. But because this is going to be a boring head holder, um, I'm not super worried about that. So the next step is not actually to machine it, but to pickle it. I have a coffee can of hydrochloric acid here that I'm going to leave the forging in and what that will do is remove this hard scale of iron oxide. The iron oxide is much harder than the steel below and it will chip away at carbide cutters. It's not good stuff and it's best to pickle your parts if you can. Especially forgings. Castings 
aren't as bad, but forgings especially. And you got to be super, super careful with hydrochloric acid. So now that this forging has been sufficiently pickled, it's time to start machining it. And the first thing I'm going to do is grip it by the end of the taper here, the sort of straight portion, and put a center in it so that I can start working on the end where the boring head will mount to. I'm a product of my granddad's son Hard working hands and a job well done Skin as thick as railroad ties And you could see kindness in his eyes I didn't want to do what he did But I always wanted to be just like him Strong enough to stay and fight A man enough to do what's right His blood is in my own The good and the bad and in between I know I'm not alone well, my phone battery died there, and all I really did was turn down this boss uh, on the end and thread it for so it can go into the boring head. Now I have, obviously, the boring head clamped in three-jaw chuck and the forged blank in the boring head. So now what I'm going to do is turn the taper. Well, really turn this, turn everything here. Uh, this straight shank area, I'm going to face the back here. I'm probably going to drill out and tap it uh, and also face this face here. So let's get to it. Mama has a heart of gold The sweetest soul you could ever know She had a boy and had one more Love and fight, what's a brother for? His blood is in my own The good and the bad and in between I know I'm not alone Cause looking in the mirror is plain to see my family Well, I meant to show you guys the milling of the drive dogs on here, but I didn't press record. And that's a 25 minute montage of me cleaning the mill up. Wasted. Oh well. I did have a couple of boo-boos. I went and I held it in the vise like this and came in with an end mill. And whenever I came back, it caught and twisted. And you might be able to see some serrations here at just caught it and wasn't held in the vise as tightly as it should have been. And then whenever I went and did the other side, I got quite a bit deeper. And then it caught and twisted, broke the end mill, and it was very gnarly. So I just milled it down, put my name on it, and now it looks like that. 
which isn't really an issue because all of the force is going in this direction. So, more cosmetic than anything else. This does fit beautifully in here. It doesn't, even locks pretty good, which is kind of nice. And it doesn't rock or anything. The boring head itself fits on beautifully. And so now, I can get the boring. Well, since I didn't get to show you guys any of the milling or drive dog slots, I guess I'll show you some boring. This here is a half inch thick uh, draw bar. Came out of my truck. It was under there, I guess, to pull wagons around on the farm. Now it's a perfect candidate to show off how a boring head works. Boring heads are very simple machines, or not really machines, but tools. They allow you to move a boring bar very precisely to create very precise holes and features. Um, that's not the only thing that they can be used for, but that's what they're most often used for. This one is a Flynn manufacturing bore head, boring head. It's a very heavy duty head and it's in very good shape, especially for what I bought it for. It's so smooth that I like to leave the lock kind of dragging on the slide so that I can actually, there's a bit of friction as I am moving it, as I'm setting my cut. So without further ado, we move this guy to zero. And let's get some boring done. I don't think that result is absolutely terrible for a homemade boring head holder. It is incredibly low profile, which is something I really like. This is actually a pretty decent sized boring head. Uh, it's not massive, but it's not tiny. This boring bar could use some work though. But overall, I'm damn happy. Well, that's that experiment done. Forging, pickling, and machining a 40 taper boring head holder. This will open up a huge new world of uh, ideas for me and options for future projects. Forging and machining is uh, something that I've kind of enjoyed doing in the rare instances, rare instances where I get to do it. I like to do more of it, and I did this mostly to well, firstly, because I needed a boring head holder and also to figure out what the weaknesses of my forging press were. Now that I've figured those out, I think I'm going to do a little bit of designing and thinking on how I can improve it. I'm definitely going to do more of this. I did definitely save a lot of time uh, as far as machining time goes. Uh, I Forging the rough blank, it took from cutting the stock to letting it cool down it was about an hour um, which is a huge time savings over simply removing all of that stock on the Chinese lathe fifty thousandths at a time so if you like this video like and subscribe and have a good day